Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, proving lines are parallel. So this is uh, very similar to the last one. The last one we had those same sided interior angles, the corresponding angles, the alternate interior, alternate exterior angles. So, so here we're going to, um, if all that magic stuff happens, here we're going to say that they're, they're, um, uh, they're parallel. Okay, so uh, this uh, question is how can we prove that two lines are parallel? So we start off with this thing called the converse. The converse of an if-then statement, um, the if-then statement if P then Q, is just formed by switching the P and the Q, and it becomes if Q then P. So what we're going to do is take uh, the last lesson, all those postulates and theorems, and we're going to switch them around, and it's going to make things true. So here's a real simple example. If I live in Sacramento, then I live in California so the the P part would be I live in in Sacramento and the Q part would be I live in California so if we just switch it around that would be the converse okay all right so so here we go let's uh, review a little bit what we did in the last lesson so if these lines are parallel so here this was from the last lesson if the lines are parallel then the magic stuff happens okay so six and blank are supplementary and this says same sided interior angle so six and three so it would be same sided interior angle so they're supplementary so would four and five four and five are supplementary for the same reason okay this one says four and blank and then it says alternate interior angle so four and six would be congruent to each other so the lines would be parallel okay if the lines are parallel okay again if the lines are parallel what is three and three and seven are corresponding angles remember corresponding angles are if I slid these two lines together, three would slide right down on seven, you know, one would slide right down on five. So, so um, three and seven would be congruent for corresponding angles. Okay. Eight, here's eight. It's an exterior angle and it alternates on the transversal with this exterior angle, angle two. So eight and two would be congruent. Seven and, well, seven and five, they're congruent no matter if these lines are parallel or not. Vertical angles are always congruent. So seven and five are congruent because of vertical angles. Okay, four and uh, blank are supplementary. Well, I know four and five are supplementary because they're same sided interior angles, but this one says linear pairs. Linear pairs are supplementary no matter what. So 4 and 3 make up this line, line L, and also 4 and 1 make up this line, the transversal, line T. So 1 or 3 would be on that one for linear pair, okay? All right, so the converse of our theorems in the last lesson, or the, there is one postulate, uh, the same sided interior angles postulate, so um, are also true. So if we just flipped them around, so here we go, we got these two lines right here, these two lines that are cut by this transversal right here, if any of the following stuff happens from the last lesson, then the lines are parallel. So the first one says, if the same sided interior angles are supplementary, so four and five are supplementary, or if they add up to 180, which means supplementary, or three and six, if they add up to 180, if they're supplementary, then those lines are parallel. Okay, see how it's real similar? The last lesson said, if the lines are parallel, then these are supplementary. This lesson saying, and if these are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. Can you see the converse happening? Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me put it back. Okay, and then this part says um, if alternate interior angles are congruent. So if we can show that 4 and 6 are congruent or 3 and 5 are congruent, then those lines would be parallel. Okay, if alternate exterior angles, so 8 and 2 or 1 and 7, if they were congruent, then the lines are parallel. Let's slide that up. We got one more, the corresponding angles one. So if 1 and 5 were congruent, or 4 and 8, or 7 and 3, or 2 and 6, if they were congruent, then those lines are parallel right there. Okay, you can see we're going to do a construction right here. I'm not going to use this very much because it takes too long. So, um, so these are all called the converses of it. So this one here was called the converse of the same-sided interior angle postulate. And if you guys just said same-sided interior angles, I think your teacher would be okay. And so this is called the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem, the converse of the alternate exterior angles, and the converse of the corresponding angles. Again, if you just said alternate interior angles congruent, con um, alternate exterior angles congruent, corresponding angles congruent, I'm sure your teacher would be cool with that. So uh, so here we go. We got the parallel postulate and it says this, through any point P, 
not on line L. Can you see this point P is not on this line right here? Okay, now I'm going to have some blue and red coming up. So there's exactly one line, this blue line right here, that's parallel. So you see my red arrows for parallel. There's only one line that goes through this point that's going to be parallel to that line right there. And we're going to try and construct this. So I'm going to use a straight edge and compass to construct a line M, I put the M in the wrong spot. So a line M through this point right here that's not on this line so that my line M is going to be parallel, okay? So I don't want you just to pick up a straight edge and just draw a straight line right there. They want us to can do a construction and we're going to do equal uh, corresponding angle. So here's what they want you to do first. So pick any point Q on line L and use your straight edge. So let's go ahead and pick a point Q. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this point Q right here. Let's make it a little bit fatter right here. Not that fat. So I'll put it like right over here I think. So and then I'll label it Q. So I did it right there. Okay, and then we're going to use our straight edge to draw a line that goes through Q and uh, L. So I'm going to take this straight edge right here and I'm going to rotate it up and then I'm going to use my, my uh, compass and, or my pencil and then draw that line right there. And it just takes too long for me to do that. So there it is right there. Okay, now let me close this. That's about, well, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's just close that. We don't need that anymore. Okay, then the next step here, you guys, we're going to use this compass over here to copy angle Q. Okay, so we're going to copy this angle right here, right up here. And so when we copy this angle, it's going to make another angle right here. And then that other angle is going to make our line M. Okay, so this is how we do this. We did this in one of our earlier lessons, and I'm just going to kind of briefly go through it. Put pointy on Q, and then I'm going to close that up a little bit, and then we're going to strike an arc that goes through, uh, oops, that's a little bit fat. Let me go a little bit uh, skinnier right there. And we're going to strike an arc that goes through, whoops, that's a little bit too fat. Okay, dang it, I didn't want to go that big. But anyways, uh, let me go back. Sorry, let me let me get this and we'll go here here okay and then so we just do that okay and then we're going to take this same measurement we're going to go up here and do the same thing we're going to uh, make that arc right there okay and then what we do after we do that these got to be the same length right here then we're going to change our compass opening we're going to put pointy right there and we're going to rotate this guy down and we're going to close the compass up so let's see so it goes right through the other intersection so let me close this up so it goes right through there all right and you got to get it just right okay so right there and then we're going to uh, make an arc right here okay so we're going to go right here whoops i didn't mean to do that let me go back sorry this is hard on 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 doing this here so uh, i know and we're going to make this arc right here and then we're going to take that same compass opening and take it right up there and do the same thing okay and so you'll see I did it right there and I can close this out okay alright and then we're going to use our straight edge and connect it up through P right there and we've just made equal corresponding angles so those lines would be parallel because they're equal corresponding angles alright Okay, so let's use the given angle relationship to decide whether the lines are parallel and explain. So, are these lines parallel if 3 is congruent to 5? Well, here's 3 and 5. I'm going to say yes because they're alternate interior angles, okay? How about 5 and 6 being supplementary, okay? 5 and 6 being supplementary. Well, 5 and 6 are a linear pair. They're supplementary no matter what. So I'm going to say no. We don't know anything about this parallel line right here. These are supplementary no matter what because they're a linear pair. How about 4 and 5? 4 and 5 right there. Those are same-sided interior. So yes, by the same-sided interior angle postulate. Okay. How about 4 and 8? Okay, so here's 4 and 8. Well, these are corresponding angles, so if they're congruent to each other, then yes, they would be parallel. So what we're going to do is plug in 15 right here. 15 plus 20 is 35. 2 times 15 is 30, plus 5 is 35. So since we get 35 on both of those, then yes, they are parallel. Okay, how about uh, let's do that again. What must be true 
about these angles to make these lines parallel, okay? And then name the postulate or theorem, okay? 7 and 3. Let's go look at 7 and 3. 7 and 3. Can you see if we slid M, line M, over here on line L? 7 and 3 would line up right with each other. 7 would slide right up into 3 right there. Those are corresponding angles. So, yes, uh, we'd have to say they're congruent because the corresponding angles theorem. How about 6 and 3? What relationship do 6 and 3 have to make them parallel? These are same-sided interior angles, so they would have to be supplementary. Okay, suppose that 4 was equal to 3x plus 5 and 5 was equal to x plus 95. Okay, where x is 20 are the lines parallel. Well, let's take a look at 4 and 5. Okay, 4 and 5, if they end up being supplementary, so I'm going to plug in 20 right here. 3 times 20 is 60. 60 plus 5, this would be 65. Plug in 20 right there, this would be 115. Well, 65 and 115 add up to 8, 180, so yes, those, uh, those lines would be paralleled by the same sided interior angles postulate, or the converse of. All right, so I missed out to put angle 3 right here. This should say the measure of angle 3. Okay, so suppose the measure of angle 3, actually the 3 goes right here, equals this, and the measure of angle 7 equals this. So look at 3 and 7. These are corresponding angles. If they're congruent, then the lines are parallel. If they're not congruent, then the lines are not parallel. So plug in 15. 4 times 15 is 60. 60 plus 12 is 72. Okay, plug in 15 right there. 80 minus 15 is 65. This was 72. This is 65. I'm going to say no, those lines are not parallel right there. Okay, all right, you guys, if you are in my class, I would assign you that. Take care. Hope that made sense.